to the second part of our creative exercise for this month. Um, what we're going to focus on here is something that I have a lot of passion for and something that I hope will offer you a lot of new inspiration. And that is the wide, wonderful world of mixing your own colors. Um, for anyone out there who's been painting for a while, you probably know that it, it can be easy to, again, fall into your patterns and, and ruts with the colors that you use. And I know for a lot of people, it's also easy to only use the colors out of the tubes. So there is this or the tubs in this this case. Um, there, there is so mu many colors and so much to discover and explore when we start to actually mix our own colors um, from, from these basic colors. So in this video, I'm going to give you just a super basic color mixing lesson. Um, this is a world that can uh, be quite vast and complex if you let it be. Um, I tend to try to keep things super simple so that you can actually just have a lot of fun without getting bogged down with all the technicalities of uh, what is a primary and certain kinds of um, real technical aspects of color mixing. So what I'd like you to grab is just any shade of red, any shade of yellow, any shade of blue, um, black, white, and then if you have some extra colors you wanna play with, feel free to, to have those as well. We're gonna work just on, or I'm gonna work just on, watercolor paper. Um, you can do this on canvas, typing paper, watercolor paper, wood, anything you've got. I also have just a variety of brushes that I'm going to work with. And I just want to remind you that there's really no right or wrong way to do this. Um, my goal in uh, offering this up this month is just to open a world of color mixing that maybe you haven't explored yet as a way to stay inspired, to keep showing up, to do your work and have fun with painting. Okay, so I'm gonna start with this color mixing exploration um, by just adding the three primary colors to my palette. So that is yellow, red, and blue. And you know, there's all kinds of, uh, <laughs> There's all kinds of things you can learn about what exactly the three primaries are, what shades and things like that. But we're going to, I'm just going to keep things simple for the purposes of this. And so any red, blue, or yellow will do whatever you've got on hand. And um, you'll find that if you have a different kind of shade of red, you know, the colors that you mix from that will just vary. So it's really all good. Whatever you have totally works. Um, the one thing I want to point out here that I hope will help you in your color mixing experiments is that when you're mixing two of the primaries together to make a secondary color, what I suggest is starting with the lighter value, which is going to be yellow here, and adding just a little bit, like you can see here, I'm just taking a little bit of blue as compared to how much yellow I have. Um, and starting with that, because it doesn't take much of the darker value, as you can see, um, to really affect the color. So if you were going half yellow, half blue, you might end up adding a lot of yellow to get what you want. So right away, that made a really beautiful, vibrant green. And if I wanted to continue to play with it, I might add a little more blue. And there I have two different, equally lovely greens. So I'm gonna leave those like that. And the same is true for mixing orange. So I'm gonna start with yellow, and I'm just going to bring a bit of red into the story here. And as you can see, voila, we have a really nice orange. And again, if you wanted to make that more of a red orange or a darker orange, you can add more red. So those are some really nice oranges. And moving on to violet. This is definitely the trickiest color to mix of the, of the secondaries. I'm going to actually start with um, about half and half, blue and red. And generally these violets will be a little bit on the darker side. I tend to um, often mix in a little white and or a little 
magenta or, a, or another kind of violet that maybe you have in, um, in your pre-bought purple varieties. So that magenta obviously made a massive difference there. Um, I'm curious to explore that a little bit more without that. So I'm going to try mostly blue, a little bit of red, and see what happens. So that's pretty blue still. We'll try a little bit more. And again, depending on what kind of blue, what kind of red you're working with, um, it will obviously affect what you are doing. So that's kind of a nice earthy kind of a color. So we'll, we'll leave that as a nice variation. So this exercise is really all about just broadening your sense of color um, so that you're not just always mixing colors right out of the tube. As you can see, just even the super simple demonstration with three really basic colors opened up a world of color. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm just going to start to play with some little color stories. And all that really looks like is adding a bit of color and then I might see what it looks like to have a shade of that color next to it. Um, I've got my white here. I'm going to add a little bit to my palette so I can lighten any of these colors. And I've also got my black, and it doesn't take much black to really darken a color. So be aware of that, but that actually created a really nice, again, kind of earthy version of orange. So what we've got here is a whole... Um, a whole color story all based on orange. And so I might actually decide what I want to do is add to this a little bit of what created orange, which is red and yellow. So adding a little bit of the red and add a little more yellow, adding some of the yellow. So one thing you'll find with painting is, you know, coming up with color schemes is a, is a very organic part of uh, this kind of painting process. And one way to keep them cohesive is to work with colors that are all related to each other. So you might start with, um, for example, you might start with this dark purple and add a bit of blue, which was one of the starting colors that created that purple. And then I might come in and add a little bit of this more magenta that we cheated on with a little bit <laughs> and a little bit of red, a little more purple. And all these colors, just similar, down to, uh, similar to this story down here, are all these colors are related to each other. They're all born from the same couple colors. And so what that does is immediately make them sort of all harmonious. And then I'm going to add some of that white. And come in with a little bit of black, a little more red. And there's another palette that has emerged. I'm going to do one last study here with our green and blue and yellow. So starting with this really nice, super vibrant green. We have this lighter version of it here. I might even lighten that up even more with some white. Adding a little yellow. Grabbing some blue. So the way that I'm doing this one is it's just kind of subtly changing every time I dip in. But this is something I do a lot when I paint. And that is to 
even just use one brush, but only a couple colors. And I'm just basically dipping in and out of different colors um, so that I'm affecting the color in a sort of a subtle way as I go. And again, it creates a really harmonious and cohesive palette, which is really nice. And then just to take this into a whole nother place, you know, once you have all these delicious colors that you've created and discovered, you can obviously let um, complementary colors, which are colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel, so purple and yellow, for example, might bump up against each other and just play around with and notice the um, the contrast that happens there. Another really great world oops, to work with is if you had a bunch of blue, and I'm actually doing it just naturally here because I'm bumping it up against the orange. You know, maybe all your <laughs> all your palettes start to come together. Um, but yeah, blue and orange are really wonderful colors to play with. And honestly, this whole thing is just about, you know, following your curiosity. I, I think of color mixing as being a real, um, it's like alchemy, you know, you kind of get to be a mad scientist here when you're playing with color. Um, but it's really important as you're finding your way through the painting process to to have a grasp on how to mix color and it's one of those things that the more you do it the easier it is um, to really understand how your colors will mix together so um, my suggestion is just to play whether you want to do this on paper or if you want to do this on your painting um, that's another option there's really no right or wrong way to do it, but um, I'm hoping that what this inspires is a little exploration into the world of color mixing. So have fun with that.